Uh, you touched upon him earlier on uh, in the first half, but obviously Luke McGrath has kind of quietly become integral to this Leinster setup. Obviously, like it's a, a pivotal position, scrum half, but I think because of the hype, all of it justified that's around Conor Murray, maybe McGrath's own development hasn't quite gotten the, um, <coughs> pardon me, the, the plaudits uh, that it's deserved. I, I've heard you argue in the past, Murray, that when he burnt me on the inside over in St. Michael's in 2011, that was the makings of a great player. <laughs> and it's, it's certainly seemed that way since, you know? Yeah, his he's star has risen since that day. I remember <laughs> analysing that clip, but this guy's good. Yeah. yeah. That got a lot of press coverage as well. <laughs> 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 but he's been absolutely excellent. I think we can get his, his stats up for, for the Champions Cup this season. Um, and he's obviously off the pitch. He's a very important leader. I think there was an, a moment um, when Johnny Sexton kicked that ball uh, against Saracens when he's running back to the halfway line, maybe just lost the head a little bit. And it's Luke McGrath who goes over to him and just tells him to simmer down as Johnny Sexton was approaching the ref again to argue. <laughs> From a long yeah. way away, though. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a clever, clever guy off the pitch, but on the pitch, he's been such an important part of their attack. Um, you can see there the try assists six, so he's he obviously any scrum half is going to get a lot of assists, putting guys over the line, but he's beating defenders. 15 he's making clean line break seven um, and anytime he's been there they've just been a little bit more steady i do still think he has again room to uh, room to improve with his kicking game the consistency of it his passing off his left hand side but there's there's so much to like about his game and we're going to look at a couple of examples here you know rassing are losing their key scrum half Lentz are getting their guy back um, and these are some of the things that he brings uh, he's coming off the left hand side actually a pretty poor pass off his left here but it's always him looking for the right time to snipe you know everyone knows he's a good sniper but it's the right opportunity. And here you get Tyke Furlan making a good carry. He's going to beat the first tackle. So instantly Luke McGrath is going, okay, I might not have an opportunity here. What's going to be really important is, is Van der Fleer there, cleaning deep beyond the ruck. You can see him opening up that hole there. Um, and this Glasgow player here has expected that fold around the corner, but it's not coming. So that's ideal opportunity for McGrath. Now in fairness to Glasgow, they do uh, fold late and, and fill up that space, but he's so robust, even for a small guy, you see him ride the tackle here. A lot of guys would have gone down there and a lovely little, probably not even necessary, but a nice little <laughs> flick at the back of the hand uh, just to look good and, and put them on the gain line. Even when he's not making breaks, his little snipe is really important. We, we spoke about the Leinster phase play um, and it can be tough for forwards to do all that phase play, you know, another carry, another pick and jam, but he's always looking for that opportunity you see here. Uh, he's going to get Devin Toner just pushing on beyond the, the back of the ruck, that little snipe over the top. Uh, and he's never going to make the clean line break there, uh, exit or recover, but valuable meters when you're, when you're going through those phases. Another really important part of his play, he's coming from the base of the ruck here, uh, is his support play. Really good off the ball. You see him just there, he gets a real good shove from the, the Glasgow 8, uh, but he's never going to accept that. He's never going to go to ground because he wants to stay alive ahead of the ball here and, and create that overlap when Lowe makes a break. There he is popping up, he's burned a couple of his own teammates as well as some of those Glasgow players uh, and accepts the ball inside and again actually gets that cheeky little offload at the back of the hand uh, and, and they're away down the pitch. But that consistency in his support play has been really important. It's important for any scrum half but I feel he's really uh, accelerated in, in that instance, uh, in that aspect of the game rather. Here you're going to get a lovely little tip on pass from, from uh, uh, James Tracy, the, the reserve hooker who's really good in that department as are all the Lancer forwards as well as the carry they have those little technical skills. He does it late to the line, so that Levy's power is even more useful because the defenders have less less opportunity, obviously, oh. to react. Oh dear God! <laughs> I think our TV's about to turn <laughs> off. Seems to have been a, oh yeah, it's all good. Um, and Levy, like a freak, uh, freak of nature, gets that fend on Williams there after beating Steenson, um, and he's through the line. This is just after he came off the bench before his season kind of exploded. But there's McGrath having set off the this, the phase off the base of the ruck, getting on the inside shoulder gets a little fend and finishes for an absolutely vital try. As well as his attacking game, he's, uh, I think he's an underrated defender. The Leinster lads all talk really positively about him in this area. Again, he's a small guy, but really important role. It's Ringrose here trying to tackle Slade. He looks like he's gone to ground, but uh, Slade just pops up off the ground again, um, and he gets the offload away to, to Jack Noel there trailing. Uh, and McGrath's job is, is in the backfield. They defend with that 13 in the front line, two guys in the back, so 15 and nine generally. There's a 15, and McGrath's kind of swept across from that side, so they're trying to cover the whole field in, in behind. Um, and you, do, you know, it's not a big shot here. Oh, our TV's gone there. Uh, it was it, actually it such it a big yeah. shot that we couldn't show it to the audience. He doesn't uh, get he, he doesn't get a huge shot it. on, but he's Life covering that space <laughs> in behind, um, and he's really good in behind there. You know, he's he's the really tackle. good in the one-on-one -on -one tackle. Yeah, we're going to see the tackle. It's really, it's really that good, and he just gets enough on him to to slow. Uh, to slow Noel 
and then he's back into the line there again, looking for more work. Um, and this is the final example. You see him there in the backfield. Again, he, they're on that 13 plus 2. Carney's back here. So they're covering all that space in behind. Uh, and when Saracens go wide, they're going to use a quick screen play off uh, Farrell in behind those two forwards. Uh, and Bosch is going to get some width on the pass. Uh, and although McFadden does well to recover there, he's got M McGrath coming up from the backfield just to combine that hit. Really solid shoulder onto the contact. Um, and that's just his, his competitiveness. You see it here again. This time he's up in the defensive line. Uh, and you're going to see him get in for a choke tackle. Again, really aggressive. Bites onto the ball there. For a small player, he's just he's so combative. And um, I think having him back is, as long as he comes through that fitness test, is, is really important for Leinster. Rassing lose there nine, but Leinster get a huge game with him.